lesson today is titled Stretching Jesus. Stretching Jesus. Slide number three. I'm going to read this account of Jesus' crucifixion from four different Gospels. Matthew 27, 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, Matthew 27, 35, spoken of the prophet, they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Verse 36, and sitting down, they watched him there. Sitting down, they watched him there. The same event, same day, Mark chapter 15, verse 25. And it was the third hour they crucified him. Verse 29, and they that passed by railed him, wagging their heads, saying, Ah, you destroyed the temple and built it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. Same day, same event, different writer, Dr. Luke. Luke 23, verse 33. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him with two male factors or malefactors, one on his right, the other on his left. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also uh, with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And then we go to the third, fourth, and final reading of the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, verse 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier, a part, and also his coat, now a coat without seam, woven from top throughout. So here his garments were put into five-fold ministry. The chiefest of those is his coat, which was seamless. That's the apostolic gift. The sewing is on the inside. You can't see it. The rest of his garments, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher were split, creating a five-fold ministry and a need for it. Verse number 25. Now they stood at the cross of Jesus Number one, his mother. Number two, his mother's sister. Number three, Mary, the wife of Cleophas. And number four, Mary Magdalene. The late comer to the cross was John. Was John. And so here you have the first church in chapter number 19, verse 23, where the apostle's garments is seamless and four parts of the garments. That's the first part of the church age. The end time church age is the same. It's four, but they are mentioned here, four of them. Later on, John, the apostle, comes last, which is in church history, the apostolic age has come last. That's just for good measure. So let's look at this here. There are several categories here, verse, slide seven, that were at the cross. They were the Roman soldiers, the priests, the two thieves, and the people. Of the people that were at the cross, there were four classes of people. The first class of people, slide eight, were those that were sitting down 
and watched him. They sat down and they watched him. The second class of people is found in Mark 20, 15, 25. They passed by and wagged their heads. They passed by. There were those sitting, then there were those that passed by. Luke 4, 23, 35. The third class of people, the people stood beholding. Number one, sitting. Number two, passing. Number three, standing. And then the fourth were those that stood at the cross that were more intimate. That's the same in every service. It's the same in every service. Every service, every gathering, four classes of people, those that sit and watch. Second class of people, those that just pass by. third class of people, those that just stand beholding. And then there's the intimate group that get involved. That's the same with offering. They just sit and watch. There's others, they just pass and rail their heads. Not today, preacher. There's others that just stand beholding. They just get stoic when the offering basket comes. They get a spiritual moment, stoic. They close their eyes to communicate with something out there. <laughs> and then there's those that are intimate. The same with tithing. The same at every funeral. There's, it's just a class. It's Pareto at its very, very best. And so, for this message, as Jesus was being stretched, they stretched his body to where some believe he may have been disjointed. That his elbow, that his uh, arms came out of its sockets here. They had stretched him so wide. Pulled out his thighs from the sockets here yeah, by his hip and popped some of his ribs. They stretched Jesus max. They started stretching him from when they arrested him. He was just an ordinary man. Just an ordinary man. Judas had to come and identify him. And he said to Judas, you betray me with a kiss. Because they said, how are we going to know him? Because he was like all the others, the other 11 that were there. He had to be identified. He was so ordinary. But when you come to his teaching, he was not ordinary. Neither a man spake like this. When he came to his miracles, he was not ordinary. They are recorded 37 miracles that he performed, but you can't factor in the many that were raised from the dead that are not recalled. You can't factor in in Matthew chapter number nine, where he healed all in their villages, in their towns, and in their cities. The Bible records four that were raised from the dead, but the Bible says there were many in Matthew chapter 11 when John sent a message and said, are you the one or should we look for another? He said to John's disciples, go and tell John the blind see. Up until that point, there were a handful of people that were healed. The deaf hear, the dumb speak, and the dead are raised. Up until that point, there are actually no recordings of any dead being raised. So there were many that were raised from the dead. If you look at his... Uh, Discourses from Matthew, Matthew chapter number five, six, and seven, the first discourse introducing the kingdom. Matthew chapter 13, uh, outlaying the kingdom in the way it should function. Matthew 20, 24, and 25, how to walk in the kingdom. Nobody could explain that like Jesus. He stretched everybody's mind, he stretched everybody's life, he stretched everybody's belief. Those that wouldn't be stretched are the ones that crucified him. 
People that are not willing to go to the next level, not willing to be stretched, will always persecute those trying to go to the next level. It doesn't matter. Let them persecute you. They will remain there after they've crucified you. When you are raised from the dead, after three years of intense study for your master's or your PhD, you are now coming to help them in their foolish world. Tell somebody they stretch Jesus, you have to stretch. Come on, say it with some passion. Sisters and brothers, for life going forward, in everything we do as New Life Covenant Church, in everything you do as a family, in everything you do as a business, number one, you cannot tolerate people who sit down and watch. So we go to dinner. If it's eight of us, I just observe who's not fighting for the bull. Because there are those who never pay for a meal. They'll sit down and watch. I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those. Turn to your neighbor and say, just don't sit down and watch. <laughs> Especially when you are inviting guests over to the house and it's time to wash up. Isn't it amazing how many people just sit down and watch or go to the toilet or suddenly have to leave or suddenly want to have a baby or something? Don't sit down and watch. Because those that sit down and watch know how to play football better than the guys on the field. Can you say amen, Stan? Category number two. Don't just pass by. On Sundays, I stay behind and greet people and so on, and I'm doing all kinds of things in my own quirky way, observing body language, seeing this, watching people, who's there, who's not there, hugging, kissing, and I'll see a piece of paper, and I'm, I'm amazed as to the number of people that will pass a paper, and I'm amazed at the caliber of people that will pass the paper. Uh, maybe they are looking to see Barry, to find out if that's his story and he's sticking to it and they don't see the paper. But there are things in life that if you don't look, you won't see. There are things that you cannot just pass by. Don't just pass by somebody who needs help. Don't pass by when there's something that needs attention. Don't be a passerby. Amen. There are people that are already sitting. As you are passing by, don't uh, uh, overlook the people that are sitting and watching. You have to say to them as you're passing by, guys, you can't be sitting and watching. I, I bought a house, I bought a cow, I married a wife. I, I have something I've got to go and do. I can't sit here with you. Don't just sit, do something. But they passed by and they criticized Jesus. The third class of people there are those that just stood beholding. They just stood beholding. Maybe they were in awe. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do. In this class of people, it, there's negative and positive. Maybe Bartimaeus was there who had just been healed. Maybe Lazarus who was raised from the dead was there. The widow's son from Nain could have been there. Jairus' daughter and the woman of the issue of blood healed on the same day. They could have been there. Here was their savior, their redeemer, their healer, their answer, their God, their indispensable one. And they standing there just stood and didn't know what to do. Couldn't help because of the Roman force and the Roman might. Couldn't help because of the religious people that were standing there and cursing Jesus and riling him. And seeing their hero totally naked, hanging on a cross and so vulnerable, they just stood there. There are times in your life when there's challenges in your family financially or challenges in the church financially where you, if you had the money, you'd be able to help. There's nothing you can do. You just stand and watch. You just stand and watch. 
And then in that same category, there are people that can do something and won't do something. They'll stand and watch. I'm told that some of the reason people don't give to Kingdom with Israel, they are waiting to see something happening there. They are standing and they are watching. But in the meantime, a handful of people are putting pieces together. We are receiving an offering for the cathedral and so on. And so there's rumor mills. Bismarck's are taking the money. This one has taken the money. Uh, the board sharing the money. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, some money has gone to Dubai in some sort of uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's this, there's that, and so on. They're traveling again. You can't allow people standing by and not participating. Look at a neighbor and say, just don't stand there. Just don't stand there. We need some help. We need some more people in PTS. We need some more people that can sing in the choir. Don't join the choir if you can't sing. Amen. <laughs> we need some more people that can help us with compassion ministry. We need some more people that have decent vehicles that can move people. We need some people that can say, I want to be involved in Chihuti, Chimukopa, in the places that we're trying to have outreach. We need that. Don't just stand there. Look at somebody that's good looking, say, just don't stand there. Break a leg, amen. Put some elbow on your grease. Get something done. Send a potato, buy an onion, send a cabbage, send a tomato, send a comb, send a, a, a new toothbrush, not a used one. Send a full tube of toothpaste, buy some soap, send some hufu, Amen. Send some expertise. I can't be there, but I can send some money. I can't be there, but you can use my team and my staff. I can't be there, but here are some clothes. Don't give old raggedy clothes. Give some of your best. Tell to your tell to neighbor, say, don't, don't just sit there. Say, don't just sit there. Don't just pass by. Don't just stand there. And then we have the last group, the intimate group, that come close to the problem. They've got skin in the game. The one carried the game. She carried the baby. She was ostracized because of what she carried. She was persecuted. And when the child was born, according to Isaiah, there was no comeliness about him that he should be desired. Jesus was not a good-looking man. He was not a good-looking man. He wasn't a ladies' man. He's not the kind of man that you can say, eee, ah, that one. If I land that one, ah, I'm gone. <laughs> he wasn't a good-looking man. And so all these pictures you see of Jesus hanging so cute, they're like, my name is Stephen, I'll be your waiter. <laughs> Jesus was not a good-looking man. What was desirable about Jesus was the platform he created. A person that has the power to create a platform, that person suddenly becomes desirable because of that platform. Because all kinds of people want the benefits of the platform. They want the platform, the microphone. And as a result of that, the person suddenly becomes appealing and good looking. Amen. And so those that have skin in the game, his mother, his mother's sister, who went through all of the challenges with her sister, all the way we don't know whether she's an older sister or a younger sister my feeling is she is an older sister because as an older sister she would come there and guide now lily is the younger sister joanna is a middle sister margie is the older sister and i've seen them as a bunch i've seen them as a bunch when they pray margie is always leading the charge and Joanna's always quiet. She should be leading the charge. She's the... Henry, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. And Lily's always crying. So... <laughs> if I was working where you work, I'd also cry. <laughs> and so then, the older sister comes to the younger sister to help her because the devil knows how to create pain. There is no pain like the pain of your child being afflicted there's no pain like the pain when you've got you take your child to hospital 
There's no pain like the pain when your child is there and there's nothing you can do. And the doctor says there's nothing you can do. The best thing you can have is your older sister to come and carry you here. Because Simeon said to her when the baby was dedicated, your heart is going to be so sore. It's going to be like a sword piercing your heart. Pain deep inside. It's the kind of pain where you cry and there's no tears in your eyes. Your eyes are ballooned. Your heart is swollen. Your soul is crushed. Your spirit is exasperated. So the sister came there and Mary, the wife of Cleopas, who was an executive in the system, they came, they part of the group that you find in Luke chapter eight. And Mary Magdalene, who had been forgiven much and had seven devils cast out of her. She had to be there to represent the fact that devils were cast out and devils are being removed. Colossians said, when Jesus was crucified and went down into hell, he made a show of those devils openly. He crushed them on their head. Mary was representing crushed devils. If Mary, who had a very precarious and colorful lifestyle, if she could have devils cast out of her and be at the cross and let the blood wash her from the cross before the resurrection, you have hope. Mary refused to sit down and watch. Mary, the mother of Jesus, refused to sit down and watch. Cleopas' wife, Mary, refused to sit down and watch. They refused to pass by and they refused to stand. They came right to the cross to help him in his last journey. Turn to a neighbor and say, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. Be because my son is being stretched and, and I'm being stretched. Uh, I, I said to the angel, I, I don't understand your word that I can be pregnant without a man, but be done unto me according to your word. Uh, and the Bible says she got pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Uh, she was an excitable young lady and Jesus stretched her once uh, as he grew to nine months. Uh, he stretched her again when, she, when he came through the birthing canal. Uh, he stretched her again uh, when she gave him succor. Uh, he stretched her again uh, when she lost him in the temple. But now she's being stretched in areas she's never been stretched before. Jesus was stretched. I said he was stretched when Herod tried to kill him as a baby and landed up in Egypt learning a strange language, following Joseph and Moses. Jesus was stretched when he settled in Nazareth, uh, knowing he's the son of God, but he's relegated to a carpenter. And then when he's baptized up John, he's stretched again. Uh, when the Holy Ghost comes over him like a dove, uh, and a voice says, this is my son, in whom I am very well pleased. Uh, yeah, you him. He was stretched again when he went into the wilderness and fasted 40 days and 40 nights and the devil came to him and said if you be God turn these stones into bread and he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God he was stretched again when the devil took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said isn't it sad that if the angels would bear you up uh, in their hands uh, let's you dash your foot against a stone jump if you were God uh, and let's see if the angels were gone he was stretched uh, he was stretched again when the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time and said all this I will give you if you'll bow down and worship him Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, 
and him alone shalt thou be served. He was stretched up when he found his disciples and said, follow me and I will make you. Making someone will stretch you. He was stretched up when he got to Lazarus' tomb, when he wept, he was stretched up. When he saw the multitude without a shepherd, he was stretched. When a woman touched him and Jairus is begging, he was stretched. When the lepers said, have mercy on us, and only one gave thanks, he was stretched with five loaves and two fish, stretched him to feed 5,000. But now he was stretched beyond measure. The stretch is producing pain, pain from Adam, the pain of Cain, the pain of Noah's generation, the pain of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the pain of Joseph in exile, the pain of Moses in the wilderness, the pain of Joshua in Jericho, the pain of Caleb for his mountain, the pain of the judges, the pain of the prophets, the pain of Elijah, the pain of Elisha, the pain of Daniel, the pain of Ezekiel. He was stretched. He was stretched. He was born of a virgin womb. And when he was buried, they buried him in a virgin tomb. The way you start is the way you end. They couldn't put him in a used tomb. It had to be a virgin tomb. Then three days later, while he was being stretched in hell, looking for that devil, I want my keys. Where are my keys? Tell someone. I got to get my keys. He was stretched in hell. Three days later, three days later, three days later. Shout stretch. Shout stretch. He was stretched from old to new. He was stretched from law to grace. He was stretched from Jew to Gentile. He was stretched from life to death. He was stretched from a tomb to resurrection, from Adam to Calvary, from past to present, natural to spiritual, obscurity to order, from, pro from predictability to destiny, time to eternity, poverty to riches, shame to glory. Somebody say amen. From darkness to light, shout stretch. Shout stretch. Shout stretch. On the third day, I said on the third day, he was raised from the dead. On the third day, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. On the third day, he conquered devils and demons. On the third day, he broke all barriers. On the third day, on the third day, come on, computer. On the third day, he released the power. On the third day, he raised all that were down and brought them out of hell. On the third day, he brought life and life more abundantly. So walk in resurrection power. Worship in resurrection power. Don't sit there. Don't pass by. Don't stand. Get close. Get high. Get anointed. Get power. Get deliverance. Get released in the name of Jesus. It's resurrection. Be raised from the dead. Dead things are coming to life. Yes. Shout three times, dead things are coming to life.
whatever is dead whatever is dead in your life is being raised this 31st of July whatever is dead in your family is being raised to life whatever is dead is being lifted what was dead is coming to life the devil is a liar I'm calling for resurrection power I'm calling for petitions to be answered and fulfilled whatever is dead must hear my word call that dead thing by its name and say and say wake up call it by its name and raise it from the dead I don't care how long that thing's been dead say come to life when G when Jesus was raised from the dead the Bible says can I preach for two minutes the Bible says that in Jerusalem in Jerusalem there were seen in Jerusalem saints of God that died for thousand years before Jesus was resurrected I don't care how long the thing has been dead in your life you have power to go back and wake up Seth and wake up Shem and Japheth and Ham and Noah you can wake up Isaac and Rebecca Rachel and Leah Jacob and Esau they will appear with you because your victory today will be someone's victory that lost it years ago I'm calling for resurrection Jesus was stretched from a man to a risen Christ he was stretched from no pain from pain to no pain he was stretched from limitation to walking through walls jumping over walls running through troops he was stretched at resurrection and stretch every person that had died without hope so you in the service stretch for life and life more abundantly rise from the dead rise from the dead speak to the dead cells in your body wake up speak to your depreciating life say wake up turn to your dead assets say rise up turn to your hopelessness say rise up give him a praise give him a praise give him a praise yeah yeah five hundred women clap your hands like you're losing your mind yes I feel resurrection power moving in this place. I feel the anointing coming to break burdens, break yokes, break limitations. It's Resurrection Sunday. Here I come in power and in anointing in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Devil, you can't kill me. You can't kill me. God has to give the permission. So while I live, I'm going to live. While I'm alive, I'm going to enjoy my life.